out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and welcome back to Underappreciated Historical Weapons. And in this one, it's a very interesting one. Is it a weapon? Kind of. It's certainly been used in warfare. That is the medieval war wagon. And yes, it's actually real. What's interesting about the war wagon is sometimes people have associated the idea of the medieval tank with the medieval knight being so armored. But if there is any, you know, uh, device that could qualify as the medieval tank, I think it would be the medieval war wagon. One of the things I like about the war wagon is that it really does seem to fit with underappreciated historical weapons because not many people know of it. You do not see it represented very much in medieval films, stories, fantasies at all. It's uh, kind of a very overlooked thing. And granted, it wasn't hugely prominent, hence why it's probably a bit underappreciated and less known, but it definitely was used and a bit more broader than you might assume. So we're going to be diving into that, just you know, pointing out where in history they were used, but also try and analyze and figure out the functionality of such a device. But before we do that, I want to talk about the ways in which you can enjoy how the medieval period is adapted into fantasy as well as other literature things, and that's through the sponsor of this video, which is Audible. If you didn't know, you can actually try Audible for free for 30 days. All you need to do is sign up. That gives you instant access for free, 30 days, to the Audible Plus catalog that has like a curated list of great or great books not just audiobooks, self-help books, sleep tracks, podcasts, as well as Audible Originals you can't get anywhere else. It gives you a free monthly credit so you can get an entire audiobook completely for free. I would suggest my own audiobook, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror, narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. Two of the best audiobook narrators in the world. And if you haven't tried, literally, you can give it a go for free right out of the gate. All you have to do is go to www.audible.com forward slash Shadowversity, or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity to 500-500. So seriously, what do you have to lose? It's so easy, and I just love, love books. If you haven't tried them out, I highly recommend them. It's one of the true forms of entertainment in my mind. We're kind of going back to one of the days when you had someone sharing a story with you. Well, this is by a professional narrator to such a higher quality, but it is that kind of thing, and you can enjoy them while you're driving, while you're working with your hands, or just because they are so engrossing and fun. The Audible app makes it more accessible than ever before. I do this many times where I'm listening to audiobook on my computer and then when I'm traveling, I can just open it up on my phone and then go to the exact same spot in which I was listening on my computer. It's all synced. So the Audible app is really, really good. And then their business model is amazing because when you sign up, the monthly subscription gives you a credit that you can trade in for any audiobook. And that monthly subscription is much more affordable than the cost of many audiobooks. It's a phenomenal deal. I have hundreds of them now because I've been a genuine Audible member for well before they were ever a sponsor. It's a brilliant deal, great platform, and awesome audiobooks. You can try it for free. Just go to www.audible.com forward slash Shadowversity, or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity 500-500. Nothing to lose, you won't regret it, and thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Alrighty, the war wagon. What is it? Where is it from? Who used it and everything? So the more, one of the more prominent places in which the war wagon was used was in medieval Bohemia by the Hussites during the Hussite Wars. And they were used to great effect to nullify the effectiveness of the cavalry employed by the Holy Roman Empire at that time. We're looking at the 15th century, so 1400s. The thing is though, this idea of having a portable kind of mini fortress to give you cover and protection to be used in many kind of versatile ways that you can reposition or just lock down to where you want it, wasn't just used in medieval Bohemia. There's an interesting example in the Battle of Bloor Heath where the English employed the supply train to make a barricade in that fight. When we look at some of the artwork depicting that battle, some look very distinctly made for the purpose of providing cover. If you couldn't get in them, they looked to be portable barricades as well as actual wagons making kind of a barricade as well. So the idea of using kind of portable, movable fortifications existed outside of uh, medieval Bohemia. There's a case where something fairly similar to that uh, also was done in England, but very much the classic war wagon where it's a distinct wagon with sides and sometimes holes where you could have gunners. And yes, medieval period did have <laughs> early forms of firearms. But it was also used for crossbowmen and archers and other things. The very classic one where it's almost like you're in a box and foldable size and everything is more distinctly associated with uh, 
the Hussite Wars in medieval Bohemia. So the philosophy behind the war wagon makes sense, and uh, we see similar kind of employments of this philosophy, not to the extent of the war wagon, but in early and other periods, of when you have ranged troops, they can be rather vulnerable, and you, so you need ways to protect them, especially if their reload time took a bit longer. And so we see an interesting thing happen with crossbowmen, is that they actually sometimes carried large forms of cover or protection in the form of the large pavese. Also pronounced pavis, you use what you like, but the pavese is a proper pronunciation, thanks Metatron, and I'm still probably butchering it. Very large shield that they could place down, reload their crossbow, kind of look out from behind, shoot, and then reload. And so having cover for ranged troops, especially with longer reload times, very important. Now, when you look at some of the early types of medieval firearms, well, they had long reload times as well, their range wasn't perfect. And so with there's medieval art actually depicting these early firearms used at the same time as bows and even crossbows, okay? And so there's a lot of, there was overlap and there was a give and take. Yes, they were very powerful, but low rate of fire as well as not great accuracy. But the war wagon wasn't just to provide cover for ranged troops and everything. If you could get uh, people using long pole arms in there as well, very useful, as well as using them in combination with other troops. And you can really see the utility of the war wagon because it's portable cover, almost portable fortifications. You could almost kind of consider it type of portable mini castle. <gasps> Not exactly, because a castle is also a residence. Um, the more strict definition, it becomes loose and they don't have actual kind of uh, crenellation stuff. But you see a, a similar philosophy, don't you? And then, of course, when multiple war wagons are used, you can actually kind of make a, a, like an actual fortress, a line of fortifications. You could even enclose a, a certain area. And think about how much that really would nullify, say, cavalry charges and things, and offer great protection to the ranged troops. They're a very clever idea, not to be used in every single instance, in every single battle, because there would be interesting logistics that uh, the war wagon would affect an army. They're, they're heavy, they'll be a bit harder to um, maneuver. You would not be able to take them over many different types of terrains, where if you just have men marching, it's easier for them to just walk over terrain that the war wagon wouldn't be able to get to. Having said that, they needed to try and adjust to those limitations anyway, if they had supplies on supply wagons, which many medieval armies had still kind of adds an additional complication. All those things to be balanced in the areas in which they could be used to greater effect. And as we saw, nullifying cavalry was a very useful one in those as well. It's really interesting how some of them had foldable sides. Sometimes this could be folded up to provide better cover, uh, full height, folded down to provide like a thicker, you know, barrier underneath. And then there are ones that have kind of firing slots built in to uh, either the folding flaps or the fixed sides as well. In terms of earlier kind of uses of this idea, having a portable barrier or defensive fortification also kind of uses it in castle sieges where they had, you know, large barriers to defend from arrow fire. It wasn't attached to a wagon though. They just kind of had, you know, this big wooden kind of wall that they were able to place and perhaps maneuver around when the opportunity was available. The thing is though, you can kind of start to ensure what the limitations would be to such devices because they were used in, you know, at the current time to uh, early types of gunpowder, but as gunpowder weapons developed and they started to get larger ones like cannons, a wooden barrier isn't going to really do the job in, in stopping one of those. So the, uh, the emergence and use of a war wagon was fairly short-lived in terms of medieval warfare, because we more see them at the end, latter end of the medieval period, being used in the time when gunpowder was around, and so, yeah, it might be able to stop some of the smaller projectiles, stop arrow fire and stuff, but like I said, as soon as you get stuff bigger, you need better protection than that. And the nature of the battlefield, of course, starts to evolve. One of the more notable defeats of the war wagon, and this was with a force that was employing 300 of them, was the Battle of Wedensenbach, I think I'm pronouncing that right, in 1504. A musket and lanchnecht regiment was able to defeat this 
force that was using the war wags. Remember, 300 of them. And of course, that's not to say they couldn't have been defeated in more conventional medieval style warfare, but get bigger guns, higher chance to be able to defeat them, nullifying some of their main advantages. Still, they were used to great effect. They're a very interesting element of medieval warfare that shouldn't be overlooked and can be employed in many interesting things if you are uh, doing kind of like a, a fictional story based in historical period or indeed fantasy, because what applications could like a war wagon be used for in fantasy? Maybe if you could get some thin metal sheet protection, you could employ them against dragons. But there are a lot of fantasy creatures in which I think a war wagon might do the job quite nicely. Imagine it getting pulled by some type of fantasy creature, I don't know, rhino or something like that, with your fantasy, you know, um, adventurers on the back of the war wagon getting better protection against goblins and other things, attach some other bladed nasty stuff to it. And yeah, there's some interesting things that you could do with a war wagon in fantasy. What are some of your ideas? Have you heard of the war wagon before? Looking forward to reading your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowverse. So until that time, everyone.